Lesson 110 is about graphs of the arc functions like arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, arc cotangent, arc secant, arc cosecant. Let's start with arc sine. And the thing we have to remember for all of these is that theta is the dependent variable now. For example, if we had y equaled sine of theta and we wanted to solve that for theta, we would say that theta is equal to sine inverse sine of y or just arc sine of y. We'll replace y here with x and we'll just be talking about like theta equals arc sine of x, theta equals arc cosine of x, and so on. These graphs look the same as the sine functions or the regular cosine function would look, except you just shift it to the y-axis. You just basically rotate them around. So let's start with arc sine, and we'll have a, a relatively short x-axis now. This would be 1, and this would be minus 1. And we put a y-axis through that, and we'll have 90, 180, 270, 360 minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, and minus 360. Let's orient ourselves now by just thinking about a few points to help us draw our graph at 0 when we would have theta equal to 0, sine of theta equals 0, but we're doing arc sine now, so we need to think of when x is 0, arc sine would be 0. So we can put a dot there to represent that. Arc sine is also equal to minus 180 and plus 180 when x is 0. It's equal to 1, or when arc sine, when x is equal to 1, arc sine would equal 90. When x equals 1, arc sine equals 90, and it also equals minus 270 degrees. And then when x is equal to minus 1, arc sine would equal 270 degrees and minus 90 degrees. So now we can go ahead and draw our function through this. Using those points to help it help guide us. There's our arc sine function. Now remember when we put a capital A in front of these arc functions, that means we're talking about a specific range of values or a specific value of theta. We have boundaries on theta. So arc sine capital A arc sine of x goes from plus 90 to minus 90, just like it did before. So it's basically this region right there that encompasses all of the values that x could be. x can only be between minus 1 and positive 1. Outside of that, that range there, we will get repeating values of theta. So if you were asked to graph capital arc sine of x, you would just do that white section that I showed there. Now arc cosine can be graphed in a similar way. Let's go ahead and graph now theta equals arc tangent of x, and we'll set up an xy axis the same way. Remember that our x values, those can go off to infinity, so we won't put like just a mark at plus and minus 1, but we'll go ahead and put marks every 90 degrees on the vertical axis, which is now, we haven't really said this yet, but that's our theta axis, and put some tick marks down below as well. Let's think about arc tangent of 0 when x is equal to 0, theta would equal 0 degrees, 
and 180 degrees and 360 degrees, also minus 180 and minus 360. So those will be places where this function will cross the theta axis. And so we remember that the, those alternate angles, those are asymptotes. So there will be an asymptote here and here and then at minus 90 and minus 270 as well. Let's think about how to draw our curve and let's just think about tangent of 45 degrees. Tangent of 45 degrees equals positive 1. So arc tangent of positive 1 would be 45 degrees. So that kind of helps us know that it's going to curve up in this direction and then it'll curve down in that direction and that pattern repeats itself and we'll do another one down through there. Now if we wanted to represent capital arctan, remember that goes from plus to minus 90 so that would just be this region right here. We just have one curve that would represent arc tan, capital arc tan of x, so keep that in mind. Now arc cotangent of x could be graphed in a similar way. Let's do one more graph. Let's think about secant and cosecant functions and let's graph theta equals arc cosecant of x. So let's just go ahead and draw our graph again and put marks every 90 degrees now to do arc cosecant and arc secant what we can remember like we did before when we learned how to graph secant and cosecant of theta we can start with our inverse function our sine function if we're wanting to think about cosecant we can think about the graph of sine and we have that over to the left we have arc sine over there so what we could do is just kind of redraw that and think about what arc cosecant is going to look like because it's the reciprocal function of sine and everywhere that crosses the y-axis that will be an asymptote for us so we can just put dashed lines through there and that would include the origin there and then our cosecant function the actual shape of it will look like this so that's the best way to do the cosecant and secant arc functions is just to think about them relative to their reciprocal functions and makes them very easy to draw. Think about capital arc cosecant. That would be from plus 90, so this part, down to minus 90, so you'd include that part right there. Those two white areas that I've shaded. And if they ask you to graph capital arc cosecant, that's what you do. So arc secant, you could graph it in a similar way. You would just use the cosine function to help you organize it and help you place it on the graph properly. So this is just an exercise in graphing and deductive reasoning and just playing the game of graphing. We've applied some rules that we already know. We know how to graph sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent functions as well as secant and cosecant so these are very similar we just trade places with the axes basically and then we can graph them let's just do one practice problem let's graph this function f of x equals arc secant of x so it's capital arc secant secant is the reciprocal of cosine the domain for cosine is 0 to 180 so let's just go ahead and set up a graph here and we'll just put a couple of marks on here and this will be at 180 
This will be at minus 180. Let's go ahead and graph what our cosine function would look like. And we can use that as a pattern to help us do arc secant. And cosine would just start out positive. It'd go through 90 and then down. And then the same over here. We'll be going from 0 to 180. So we know we'll have an asymptote right through here and another one right through there. And if we just want to graph arc secant, that means we need to just graph this much and we stop. And then we'll graph this much and we stop there at 180. Then if you want to, you know, you might, if you're using a pencil, which you should be using a pencil, just draw the cosine function lightly in there and you can erase that later and you just use that as a pattern to help you put arc secant in the right spot. Erase the cosine function or the arc cosine function, I guess actually is what that is. And then there you have capital arc secant. Okay, well that's all for lesson 110.